In the 19th century, an important cultural center was established in this place. And in 1886, thanks to the care of Count Joseph Dishkevichus, a pro-gymnasium was established where many future Lithuanian politicians and public figures studied. Among them, the first president of Lithuania, Antanas Smetona, the prelate Kazimira Stepona Shulis, the press worker, doctor of philosophy, Jurgi Shulis, and the chairman of the main committee for the liberation of Lithuania, engineer professor Stepona Skiris. All the teachers were of non-Lithuanian nationality and the language of instruction was Russian. The fact that the pro-gymnasium attracted a large number of pupils in a small town of the outskirts of Lithuania is explained by the fact that Palanga belonged to the Curonian province and the Tsar regime was more liberal here. In December 1891, at the age of 15, the future president of Lithuania, the Lithuanian state, Antana Smetona, enrolled in the third grade of the Palanga Pro Gymnasium. He was very gifted in science, but was slightly less successful in mathematics. At that time, the root of the book careers were passing through Palanga. Antana Smetona formed a secret group of readers of the Lithuanian press, which even had its own book bearer, who brought them the publications Abzhvalga and Varpas. The young Antanas was fascinated by the work of Maironis, Adam Mishkevich and other writers of the Romantic movement. According to the writer Vaishgantas, the years spent at the Palanga Pro Gymnasium made Antanas Smetona an intelligent and conscious Lithuanian. Later, he often stressed that Palanga was always dear to him and that every corner of it was precious to him, commemorating the school years of his youth. The pupils of the Palanga Pro Gymnasium lived in two dormitories, unofficially called Zobernishki and Martyshauskas after the names of the watchmen. In the winter of 1892, the Zobernishkis, including Antana Smetona, provoked the Martyshauskis by building a snow castle, pouring water over it and storing their weapons in it. Unable to bear this, the enemies of the Martyshauskas decided to destroy the castle secretly. Among them were the future signatories of February 18th, brothers Jurgis and Kazimiras Shaulei and Steponas Kiris. At around 10 p.m., the demolition of the ice castle began with a saw. A group of school, children, school children pulled out of the Zobernishku dormitory, determined to use chairs to defend their castle. A fierce fight broke out. Zobernishki won and the castle was saved. At that time, these four boisterous school children were never dreamt that 26 years later they would become the founders of the state of Lithuania, the signatories of February 16th. In the spring of 1893, after graduating, Antanas Metona and Steponas Kairis decided to work the occasion by visiting Pr Prussia. They persuaded three more friends to join them. They guessed that the border would be heavily guarded and set off for Nemirseta in a secret fishing boat. Once ashore, they spent scouts to investigate the shore. The scouts were quickly spotted by the teachers from Palanga who were resting there, so the scouts sent back with a hood and all the brave men jumped into the boat and swam back. When they arrived in Palanga, a border soldier was waiting for them, who swore at the end and, for some unknown reason, quickly let them go. Teachers who had come from Nemirseta were waiting at home. This journey was bound to end sadly because they did not yet have their pro-gymnasium living certificates and could have been denied them, thus preventing them from continuing their education. However, the travelers did receive their certificates with presents. Antana Smetona was given a day in the, in the military prison. The friends they met at the Palanga Pro Gymnasium later walked together with Antana Smetona more than once.
This place is special not only because it was the location of the pro gymnasium, but also because in this place, next to the church, the issue of palangas belonging to Latvian or Lithuania was being discussed. In memory of the four signatories of the Lithuanian Independence Act, a seven meter high white grayish granite stone with a stainless steel structure in the lower part was erected in 2018. The steel construction seems to play with lines and shadow bands, which can be identified with Lithuanian national patterns. At the top of the seven meter high monument, the designers came up with the idea of inserting the steel symbol of the Lithuanian state, the Vitis. The monument was designed by architect Algirdas Jabrauskas and sculptor Aruna Sakalauskas. You see a vertical a sprout emerging from the ground where he li we live, a sprout that does not end in a closed structure but rises upwards, and one segment about the fact that the 100th anniversary is only a small part of history, but in that time a lot has been done to wake up the nation from its lethargy, said architect Algirdar Jebrauskas. According to him, the future awaits us in the way we create it, how we preserve our language, culture, and faith. At the end of the ally grows an oak tree, a symbol of Lithuanian strength.